Good morning and welcome to everyone who's joining us this morning on this session on MetaSkills Helpful Practice. Um, we have two presentations this morning, uh, which will run until about half past 11, and then a question and answer session uh, shortly afterwards. Um, so please keep your questions and any points you have to the presenters until that section of the, of the session. Um, the first session today is from uh, Ed, Ed, Dundee and Angus College and SDS, which is uh, in from the, the Dundee region. And uh, it's going to be from Shona McKnight and Karen Watson. So Shona, over to your good self uh, to deliver your presentation. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, and hopefully you will be able to see my presentation on screen just now. Thank you. Um, so our presentation um, discusses the steps that were taken to support our students towards becoming more independent learners. And we hope to achieve this through collective classroom awareness. Oh, and it's not for some reason moving forward. There we go. Apologies for that. Um, professional practice and values are our drivers that inform and underpin the strategies to transform both um, staff leadership as part of their career long professional learning and opportunities for our students to lead their own learning. Um, arguably, we could have selected any number of professional standards um, linking two meta skills um, over and above the five that are shown on the screen. Um, our aim is therefore to foster a staff student collaboration with focus on improving teaching and learning that is value for both parties. And we're very much taking a back to basics approach with all our departments. And we have developed a RISE course on meta skills and the vocabulary um, is on our learning and teaching summary forms. And we're working very closely with the people team at Dundee and Angus College, and that's with regards to the language being very explicit as part of the job vacancies um, and the interview process. Um, the, the TEACH pre is our precursor to TQFE at the college, and um, myself and my colleague Katie are developing um, CPD sessions. Um, what we're going to do is, is to run a, a test bed um, with the teaching TQFE um, cohorts, and then um, with a, a college-wide rollout from um, August. Now, this will include uh, an invitation to our local um, sort of school colleagues, both secondary and primary. Um, unfortunately, Katie's been unable to attend today's webinar um, because she's supporting our, our TQFE cohort. However, I would just like to acknowledge Katie's expertise relating to meta level skills. Um, the work our group tutors undertake in supporting our students um, with forward applications such as UCAS statements means this is an important focus regarding the use and understanding of the meta skills language. Um, the Let's Meta drop-ins, these are our uh, means to support our colleagues um, who wish to share classroom approaches, or perhaps they would like to discuss ideas where they could incorporate meta skills into a topic or, uni or a unit outcome. Um, in development currently, there's a, a meta level skills locally devised unit, and our colleagues uh, um, within the LDR team have developed a, um, a career management skills um, LDU. So those are both units um, that, that can go um, out for our students um, to make sure that skills language is very much explicit as part of um, their learning um, through a, a, a sort of tool, through an LDU tool. Um, we have identified a, a skills team within the college and there's a Dundee steering group that's been established and that's um, college schools, both again, both secondary and primary and skills development in Scotland. And there's a um, pilot for profiling tool that's commenced. Although that's very much in its infancy, um, my colleague Carl from SDS will go into this in greater detail during her presentation. Um, in conjunction with SDS, though, the student application process has been adapted for the 21-22 cohort, and this contains a link to attach their MyWi profile. And um, there are also planned CPD sessions for staff who are conducting interviews, and this is to tease out relevant skills um, in conjunction with the MyWi profiles. Um, signage will be developed, and this is very much in collaboration with our students, where we can discuss meta skills language that's accessible to them. 
but everything underpins our learning and teaching, that this is wider than curriculum only, rather it is very much a whole college approach where each department contributes and they're supported in doing so. Um, sorry, I've just got back on to, there we go, sorry about that. Um, Future Talent was launched in 2017 and the website includes a moving on um, signpost with links to support um, for um, SES, for DYW and for the university partners. So all this information is contained and meta skills inclusion is very much part of this provision. Um, the work is achieved in partnership and this involves a range of teams including employability, learner engagement and our students association and this is to ensure a consistent approach is undertaken um, across the college. So for example learner engagement supports students to develop their work ready skills through the DNA attributes and this links to local employers via volunteering opportunities. Further to this, um, LDR closely support our local secondary schools, and this is with the college application process, and work has also been undertaken with Aberdeen University um, to improve um, this transition into FE. And the, the Future Talent Service provision, um, their, their vision is a holistic, partner-centred approach to career management skills delivery that enables all participants to develop the essential work-ready skills and required to actively participate in the world of work. So um, this is all about contextualised consciousness and understanding that emerges as a result of collective classroom um, discussion between students and academic staff um, regarding learning intentions and success criteria reflections. So the dialogic exchanges between students and staff are important to provide the shared space that makes sense of and articulates experiences. Um, the learning conversations lead to learning with and from others, which in turn develop skills, knowledge and expertise that better support our students. And this in turn um, develops skills in self-regulation, self-determination and autonomy um, towards knowledge and understanding of their learning. So our shared vision and um, le leading learning, inspiring success can be achieved through close and collaborative working that's built on trust. Um, our college is very much an extension of the school campus and the work we undertake in collaboration with and um, listening to learning from our partners is linked to sustained and positive destinations for our students. So this approach develops a shared vision um, in our planning for continuous improvement. For example, although we can measure and record skills through our learning teaching summary forms and the profiling tools pilot, we really need to draw on what is working and what can be improved through a cycle of evaluation. And from our research, both the analysis and insights gained from the data um, can be shared to make meaningful impact for our students. For example, um, our continual close working with um, schools for a more seamless transition into tertiary education and for preparing for life beyond college. Um, so just to conclude, um, if security no longer comes from being employed, then it must come from being employable. And this particular quote from Cantor, um, um, which was um, 32 years ago actually, um, is as relevant today as it was then. Um, so should you wish to make contact, my um, details are at the top of the screen, as well as um, Chrissy Calder, who's the Academic Development Lead, Gemma Knox, um, LDR Team Leader, and Sam Sterling, LDR Manager. And both Christine and Gemma will be available during today's um, Q&A session and I would like to thank you very much for your time. Thank you Shona um, and I think Karen uh, you're going to uh, carry on a, a presentation on how SDS has been working with the college and the local region in Dundee. Thank you, Peter uh, and colleagues for the invitation uh, to share some of the innovative partnership work that's happening across Dundee at the moment, which has meta skills at its very core. You, you've just heard from Dundee and Angus about the really excellent work that they're taking forward. And what I'd like to do over the course of the next few minutes is just give you an insight into some of the complementary activity that's happening ahead of learners transitioning up into Dundee and Angus College. 
So you'll see from the, the slide there in the SDS education team, we believe that a learner journey approach to embedding career education and supporting um, the development of, and profiling of skills is the most effective way to empower learners to be able to identify, capture, and very importantly, evidence and articulate their skills, the skills that they're going to need to enter the world of work and also to thrive in it going forward. Within that approach, there are four key elements that we've identified uh, that are necessary, a common skills language, and that's the language of Skills 4.0 or Meta Skills, a portable online learner account, which we have in, in My World of Work, and the new skills tools that were, were added there last into the um, profiling tool there in my wow last year are actually built on the language of skills 4.0. A consistent and continuous approach to skills profiling is really important as well, and that's not just in guidance classes or in, in pupil support classes, but right across the curriculum and subject areas. And from our own team, we offer um, professional learning for practitioners so that everybody involved has an understanding of what's gone before and what the expectations are so that we all can collectively deliver the entitlements uh, for young people. In the spring of um, 2019, it was a, a number of partners in Dundee um, got round the table um, and we discussed how we might improve the, the learner journey approach together and decided to form a steering group. Shona's already referred to that in her presentation. So the group at that time comprised of the, the, one of the directors from Dundee Angus College, the head teacher from Ball Dragon Academy, and two of their cluster primary schools, the DYW lead from St Paul's Academy, a quality improvement officer from Dundee City Council Education Department, and myself from ASDS. And our key ambition at that stage was really to try and simplify what was becoming a very complicated landscape in terms of vocabulary around skills, the methods of creating skills profiles. Some were paper-based, some were um, blogs, e-portfolios, many of which didn't meet the requirements of GDPR when that came in. And in some instance where there was no profiling at all taking place. So we wanted to try and make it a more meaningful experience for both the learner and the practitioners involved and to give it more value. The new Education Scotland guidelines had just come out June before, and those indicated that profiling should not be something that just happens in P7 and A3, but really it should be a consistent and continuous process. So that, that, that was our, our main ambition uh, for the steering group. And you'll see there on, on the slide on the screen, um, we started off with about six people around the table, um, but just in the last couple of weeks, with 26 people around the table in the steering group, uh, we thought it might be a good idea to try and break that down into a number of different work streams. So we still have the same ambition for the overall group, um, but because there are so, there's so much interest in the work and so many people want to contribute, which is fantastic, the, the work streams that we've came, come up with so that people can feed in their area of interest and expertise and we can pull that all together on, under um, the original steering group. To give you a flavour of some of the activity that's happened along the way, um, one of the first things that the, the steering group decided to do was to bring together all the subject teachers in Baldragan Academy, so 86 staff in total, with 12 curriculum leads from Dundee and Angus College, representatives from the primary cluster and 12 employers during an in-service day. So we had recognised that um, not all staff would be confident to talk about language in the language of meta skills, and not all at that stage were including skills development in their everyday learning and teaching practice. So we wanted to try and offer an opportunity to open up discussion and, and try and build confidence. What we did was we had initial, an initial input around meta skills, and then the group was split into 12 tables, each with one of the meta skills. And they were asked to describe which, whichever one they had, maybe creativity, curiosity. How do you develop that in your classroom, whether you're in PE or physics or primary school or in the college? And then the task for the employers was to explain what they would be looking for 
if they had six people in front of them and they uh, interview for one job, all with the relevant qualifications, how would they pick out one person if they needed somebody to be creative? What would that look like and what evidence would that person need to be able to provide to the employer to make them convince them that they were the right one for the job? So the discussions were really interesting and the feedback really positive. Uh, and it was surprising to, to hear that really it was an opportunity that nobody in the room had had um, before. So they were keen, keen to do more of that. This is the timeline that we're, we're working to as a group. I'm not going to go through this in detail today, but I thought it might be useful just to pick out a few things that are on there. It's been changed many times um, for all sorts of reasons, not least COVID. Um, but also for good reasons, to include new ideas and opportunities that come up along the way as well. Uh, the first tile there talks about skills champions, and, and Shona mentioned them earlier. So there are four skills champion tutors in Dundee and Angus College now, four teachers in Baldragan from across the curriculum, and four um, skills champions from the cluster primary schools. And some of the activities that they've been involved in to date include supporting uh, staff who are maybe less confident to engage uh, and use the tools on my, and resources on my world of work uh, and to familiarise them with the, the language of meta skills. One champion in particular in, in Baldragan um, took it upon herself to create a, a really useful resource for staff to help them assess learner progress in relation to each of the meta skills. So to, to see how, how pupils could um, actually see how they were um, progressing with that particular skill and that's being trialled at the moment in learning conversations in the school uh, to try and boost both teacher and pupil confidence around the language. We also in our SDS education team during the, the lockdown developed a series of e-learning modules for practitioners, one uh, on embedding skills and one on skills and profiling and the skills and profiling one was trialled by 120 teachers in St Paul's and all the staff in Craigall Primary School during November in service. And the feedback was used to, to refine it before it was launched um, to, the, to um, the sector. So that's been really helpful insight and uh, input uh, through the pilot as well. Shona also mentioned um, that Dundee and Angus are the first college to adapt their application process for the coming academic year to allow the inclusion of a MyWow profile. So that's something that we're going to be evaluating to see um, if it does add value. Already, some of the feedback from the schools involved is that um, to, to have a profile used in this way gives it much more currency. So staff and learners can see that they're doing it for a purpose and it will have an actual use. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that, um, how that pilot works out. Karen, can I interrupt you? Sorry to interrupt you, but we're, we're going to run out of time for Helena. Um, okay. But we should be able to, could, could we draw a halt there to let Helena speak and then we can come back to you once the recording stops and the question and answer session course, continues. Yes. I'm sorry, to, to, but it just time is marching on um, at, at this point. Um, we can come back to that uh, right after you, um, after the, the, the session, is, the recorded session is finished. Um, Helena, could we come to you to give you your 10 minutes or so to, to, to give us the main messages behind Daydream Believers and the creative thinking qualifications that you have developed? Yes, thanks very much, uh, Peter. Um, this is, um, for any of you out there, maybe you recognise this scene. 10 minutes before I came on here, my internet went down. So um, this is a wing and a prayer and a bit of sticky tape and a lot of help from Kenji, who's going to share our slides. So I promise you I'm going to move as fast as I can. If the slides go and you can't hear me, do wave at me and let me know. Um, and uh, as Peter knows, I'm, I can sing. I, I've got a wee song I can, you know, so if all, all doesn't work out, um, I can do a fair rendition of Daydream Believers. So as Peter says, my name is Helena Good. I am a design lecturer at Edinburgh College and I'm currently on secondment to Skills Development Scotland. I'm also the team leader on the Daydream Believers programme. Next slide, Kenji. So but my, as I said, I am a, a, a lecturer uh, and I'm on secondment. The story that I'm about to tell you uh, is very much got 
uh, its ethos behind my role as a lecturer uh, on in the HND Graphic Communication Edinburgh College. And about two and a half, a year and a half ago, I did the uh, at the minute unimaginable. Or here I am in a, with a group of people in a room uh, hugging strangers. So um, this very much the ethos. Next slide, Kenji. Very much the ethos of our course is around this theme: tell me a story, make me care. And the story I'm about to tell you is one is my story, but it's also the story of a, a number of people and a few of them are here in the call. Uh, Kerry Heathcote, uh, who's the quality ad admissions manager, assessment manager within Edinburgh College. And it is in real testament to her bravery that this story has uh, all of the elements in it. So next slide, Kenji. So what, what I'm going to talk to you about is a story around collaboration and it's where um, competitors um, no longer saw themselves as competitors, where um, schools, colleges, universities came together to look at how we could take something like meta skills and embed it directly into our classroom. So in the next slide, what you'll see are some of the competitors, collaborators that we worked with. And that was from Glasgow School of Art right through into the some of the secondary schools across um, Edinburgh and the Lothian, as well as some of the partners. And the next slide that you'll see, it tells you a little bit about Daydream Believers and, and really what our mission statement was. And the believers, the Daydream Believers came as a result of the collaboration between some of the partners you saw there. Our mission is very simple, to put creativity at the heart of education. We were a group of people who knew what we needed to do and in a way got tired of talking about it and said, let's do something about it. In the next slide, you'll see some of the partners that we have worked with over the, the last uh, year and a half that the Daydream has been live online. Um, it's a very simple formula. Everything that you see, it currently exists on our resource. It's 50 minute lessons that you can take a little bit like a shopping channel. You can add thoughts become things with matching trousers and storytelling and check out with a bit of empathy. In the next slide, we move to a different part of the story. So um, very much what we wanted to do was to look at how we could take the believers and the partners in Daydream and look at a way to embed this directly into our schools and colleges. So in the next slide, I'm going to talk to you about the qualification and creative thinking, which effectively is a how, a way to embed uh, um, our meta schools in our classrooms. So. In the next slide, what you'll see with um, the, the World Economic Forum, this would became our mission statement to look at where meta skills, where, where the, the roadmap from the World Economic Forum was, and looking particularly at these meta skills and how we could embed them into a qualification. In the next slide, what you'll see is the design process, hopefully. Yes. So in this next slide, it's the ethos of the qualification. And it's a process that um, has meta skills at its very heart. It's a process that I think every single one of us at the minute um, is embedded within. I'm certainly very much at the fail and fix here as I hold my phone and pray up to the that the internet is going to stay strong for us. But it's got creative bravery. It's got all of those elements in it. And these are the elements very much embedded in the story I'm telling you. And the next slide, what you'll see then is, is how this works. So in fact, what we did originally, we, did, we went to SQA and we, we asked them to help us with this qualification. Um, it didn't pass the business case at that point in time within SQA. So it allowed us in a sense to look at a different model. So this is a, a, a qualification that has been credit rated by Edinburgh Napier University and will be moderated by Edinburgh College. In the next slide, what you'll see are the learning outcomes attached to that qualification. So we wanted to keep it really simple. Um, there are only five learning outcomes. They're directly linked to the assessment criteria and assessment process. Um, you can see there that there are little icons there and you can see how it relates directly to the design process we just talked about. In the next slide, Kenji, if you're there, Level six is very much the same. So you can flick through this quite quickly. It's exactly the same. There's a level five and a level six. And the next slide, you'll see that they're really all we would look for in terms of the learning outcomes. It's just a bit more weight behind that. 
So, you know, more evidence on the research side of it, more evidence on the creative thinking, things like that. And the interesting thing about this is the only part of this, uh, these qualifications that is product driven is the learning outcome for which is the storytelling. Everything else gives merit to the process part of it. So in the next slide, Kenji. What we're, what we're looking at here is a very different model of um, resourcing that because we were very aware that um, resources shape courses and we were also very aware as a team, if we wanted to bring something new, we had to package the whole thing up. So this is a playlist and what we want um, or what we're keen to look at is how playlists could replace textbooks. And to, to think about education in terms of a Spotify um, experience. So each of these um, playlists, you see one there in Creative Bravery, one on Circular Economy and one on Environment and Wellbeing. And then within each of the playlists are what we're calling challenge based learning. So these are challenges that are written by partners, charities, our universities and colleges. And uh, roughly around each of them, they'll start with a sort of 16 word challenge and they'll have uh, support for that as well as warm up exercises. And the next slide, um, that might make a bit more sense as to what we're, how that would actually work. So this is how it would pan out across an academic year. Um, now you may look at this and, and think, well, this, this might relate directly to your school, but it's flexible, it can move. So where we've identified one might have thoughts become things there might have three, three um, sort of 12 weeks or so, it may change, but each of these have uh, SCQF points attached to it. The level five and the level six are a 24 SCQF qualification. And um, you'll, when you see with a circular uh, fashion, that might have maybe 10 uh, SCQF points. But you can also see a very different model of assessment. You can see where the formative assessment fits in and then where the moderation process would happen with the support of Edinburgh College. So next slide, Kenji. So this is a, a lesson overview, if you can see it. Um, this is for circular fashion, and this is working with our partner, a new partner that we have uh, started working with us uh, on Daydream, and that's the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And you can see how it's broken down. Um, what will happen is you will get all the resources um, to scaffold out this project as a lecture. You'll learn about the circular economy and then the partner sets the challenge. So the context to that challenge is really important as well as the warm up exercises in it. Next slide, Kenji. We'll move very fast through these, Kenji. So you can literally just kind of flick through the slides now. Um, the, all, we're, all I'm showing you here is what you as a lecturer, if you, you download this when our webpage on Daydream, it will be updated at the end of April, May. So Kenji, next slide. Um, this is what the content that you would be able to download as part of your resources uh, for this particular lesson. Um, so Kenji, yeah, so basically within uh, the Ellen MacArthur very quickly there you will work with TML. What I'm showing you here is how we're going to package up the assessment and uh, this is based on a kind of stamp method that my colleague Ruth uses in, in Napier. Uh, next slide Kenji. So how this works, um, and it's an interesting way because often, very often around meta skills, it's the assessment part of what somebody called me a very fluffy experience is often uh, very difficult to, to, to map. So the way that we were doing this within the level five, six is that the dot in the middle of that stamp um, the spider diagram will be a D and as you move further out that becomes an A and what that enables the learner is to see how meta skills are linked directly to the whole process around this challenge based um, curriculum and, and method and they also see the ways that they need to improve so next slide Kenji. And very quickly, we're looking at developing up a, a, an assessment app. And in the next slide, what you'll see um, is, you know, how that will look. Our hope is that this will be uh, available to, to test um, come April and uh, sort of May of this year. You'll be able to put in your own student names uh, in the next slide. What will happen then is the rubrics behind the um, assessment part of the qualifications will sit within this app. Uh, in the next slide, uh, Kenji, 
um, you'll see how you can actually just kind of move up and down uh, on the rubric. So it will let you as a lecturer see what is an A, what is a B, and it will link that directly to um, the stamp model. And for me as a lecturer, the exciting thing about that is very often you look at a piece of work and you go, I know that's an A, but I'm not quite sure how I can go back and justify that. This allows you to do that really, really clearly. And also from an employer's point of view, that also is the option. So next slide. Uh, Kenji, you're doing you're doing a great job, I have to say. You're my you're my Debbie McGee. Um, so this is our timeline. We are looking for schools and colleges who are interested and in been part of the process and are interested in, in piloting this. And uh, we're going to launch a pilot. We have, I think, over 12 schools at the minute who are going to journey with us. Some of them are going to run this creative thinking right across the curriculum. Um, you know, so you're looking at teachers with modern studies, teaching it and various things like that. And that's what excites us hugely. Um, next slide. So the interesting thing about when you introduce as a lecturer um, any new qualification or anything else, um, there's, a, there's a sense of dread, you know, oh my God, something else new and how am I going to cope with this? But here's the thing about meta skills, we've got this. Meta skills is our human being. It is what makes us human. And all that we are doing here is supporting ways, opening up ways within the curriculum to bring these skills in, to assess them and to resource and support you to do that. So in the, the next slide here, this is my end of my story. Peter will be glad to see here. Uh, this is the end of my story. And my call out today really is to you as colleagues, to you as friends, um, to, to look at this and join us in this story. We're very much at the iteration stage, the fail and fix. If this qualification, if this approach is something that interests you, um, please get in touch. And I know my colleague Kerry here will be here to answer any questions, and as will I. Um, but you know, get in touch. In the last slide, I think it's got the the, the daydream um, uh, details. You can get in touch to us through that or directly um, through Edinburgh College. So. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well done, Kenji. Yeah, you held up well. Hopefully that was fairly straightforward um, and uh, open to any questions when the time arises. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, it's, uh, first, just to say thank you very much to Shona and Karen and Helena for uh, presenting this morning. This is the end of the recorded part of the session, which will go into the YouTube channel um, later today. Um, but what we are going to do for everybody here just now is that we're going to continue um, with, uh, 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 with the presentation from Helena and then with question and answers for the next 20, 25 minutes or so on both presentations. So um, that's really it from us just now. Thank you for joining the, rec the recorded session.